My name's Oral Maguire. I am the chair of Yaraguay Enterprises Incorporated and I'm a manga at Balarong Mula. And my name's Anne Smith. I work for Greening Australia. I'm one of the business unit leaders. Through the work that I was doing and a lot of the advice that we were giving the, the Avon Catchment Council was around engaging, consulting, you know, Myanmar people. Because uh, I'd had my own journey of, you know, reconnecting to country and, and coming home. And so I applied through the Indigenous Land Corporation for a number of uh, properties. It was at that point that I'd started to consider a farm as opposed to uh, other other properties, other types of properties. You know, so the idea of getting a farm and then, you know, considering the whole idea of healing country and through revegetation and rehabilitation was was where I'd started to go with my thinking. Hi, I'm David Collins. I've worked for Greening Australia for the last eight years. One of our main projects has been at Malak Niran at Yarraguay at Beverly, Western Australia. Part of the 20 million trees project, we've planted over 300 hectares on that property now uh, for various projects. So we've got trees that are eight years old right up until ones that we've planted this year. So we've used a range of establishment methods, um, including direct seeding and planting tube stock. Also some small sites that are very rocky, inaccessible, we've used clay balling to uh, distribute seed and establish plants. And uh, some of them will provide even bush tucker or seed production. You just don't realise how significant removing sheep from one specific area, how big an impact it has you know, on, on the land itself. Uh, we're seeing you know, plants that probably haven't grown here for you know, 100 years or more. The first time that I really started to think about it was when uh, Anne made the statement that uh, what will be great is when you know some of these species that are in the soil that have been here forever, uh, but because of the sheep and because of the, the grazing and the cropping and you know the machinery and everything else and the erosion, uh, may not have had a chance to you know, establish. If there's overgrazing, you lose species and so you're reducing your biodiversity and you're just drifting back to the situation is a lot of these sites that we're working on now, some of them have only, only got one native species left, which is often the eucalyptus locks of fleaver. This patch of um, powder bark wandu where the campsite is and where we are right now, even underneath the trees where, where there's now lots of leaf litter and bark and material sort of collecting, it was bare and now you look around and you can walk down in the gullies and it's, it, the leaf litter is building up and, and you can see the, um, the passageway through it where echidnas have been feeding. It is the meshing of the, the healing of country and the science coming out and seeing those two um, meshing together yeah. and actually witnessing the country um, healing itself with yeah. a little bit of help from us. It's a, it's a privilege, it's an astounding thing to witness. The, the, the first year that we we actually physically took possession and came out here, uh, you know, my brothers and I found uh, significant heritage sites that were uh, there were sacred sites. Uh, we found a burial site, we found a significant ochre site, uh, we found lots of marker trees and marker rocks. And these things don't exist on every property. Um, Oral has always indicated how culturally significant this uh, property is to uh, his family and the Noongar people. We can certainly see there's some very interesting rock formations. It's quite high elevation so you can get very good panoramic views uh, from the whole, uh, looking up and down the Avon Valley. Our vision's been, you know, to plant, our Yaragua vision has been to plant a million trees here. The fact that we're halfway there also indicates how big, you know, the task has been. 